Hello guys, welcome back to Tech Dos and in this video we will look at find the number of distinct colors among the balls problem which is from lead code number 3160. Let's now read the problem statement. In this problem you are given an integer limit and a 2D array queries of size n cross 2. There are limit plus one number of balls with distinct labels in the range of 0 to limit. Initially all the balls are uncolored. For every query in the given set of queries that is of the form x, y, you mark the ball x with the color y. After each query you need to find the number of distinct colors among the balls. Return an array result of length n, where result at i denotes the number of distinct colors after the ith query. Note that when answering the query, lack of a color will not be considered as a color. Now if you look at the first example, here it says about the limit being 4. That means uh, you have the distinct labels in the range of 0 to 4. So I'll just mark it as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So these are all the balls you can just imagine about it. Now the first query coming is, for ball number 1 the color is 4. So for ball number 1 we can save color 4. Now how many distinct colors do you have? You can just iterate over this entire array and find out how many distinct numbers do you see. So we saw only one distinct number and that is why uh, we can say the answer to be 1 for this particular query, right? Now if you go to the second query it is saying that let the second ball be of color 5. And if you happen to do that, uh, then again you iterate through this array and find the distinct colors. There are two distinct colors and that is why 2 is the result for this query. Again, if you go for 1, 3, it is saying that ball 1 should now be colored with the color 3. So we are replacing the color of 4 by 3. Now again you iterate through this array and count the number of distinct colors, you will get 3, 5 which is 2 colors. So that's why the answer is 2. And for the next query, you can see uh, you have 3, 4. So go to ball 3 and color it with 4. And now after doing that, again iterate through this array and find the number of distinct colors. And so you will find 3 colors and that is why you have 3 as a result. Okay. So this entire array uh, should be re uh, returned, which will be recording the number of distinct colors after each of the query. So this can be considered as the brute force approach. In this case, the space complexity is order of n because uh, where n will be, let's say the limit, because we have to create all those balls, right? And then uh, for each of the queries, if q number of queries are coming, then for each of the query, we just have to go to the array and just mark it with certain color. And after that, we might have to iterate through this entire array, which will again take order of n time. So each of the query will be served in order of n time right so if you have q number of queries it will be served in q n time now let's see if these are actually feasible numbers so if you come down and see the constraints the limit is 10 to the power of 9 and we know that the space complexity was order of limit or you can say order of n right so this is not a feasible number i'll show you in a while the queries length is 10 to the power 5 that means maximum queries are 10 to the power of 5 and each of the query will come in a pair of x, y, where x is the ball and y is the color. And uh, each of the values will be within the limit, right? And uh, the limit is maximum 10 to the power of 9, as you know. So if you definitely write a limit times of queries algorithm, that q n algorithm, then definitely that is going to be 10 to the power of 14, which is way beyond your 10 to the power of 8. We should always aim to solve our problem in less than 10 to the power 8 computations. Now let's see why we cannot use the array as I said. So the number of balls given are limit plus 1 which is from 0 to limit. And the limit value is maximum 10 to the power of 9. So maximum number of balls will be 10 to the power of 9. And the array type being integer that we will be taking to record the color number which I will consider to take 4 bytes. Therefore the total space will be the maximum balls that we can have and the data type that is used to record each of the ball color. So it will be 10 to the power 9 times of 4 bytes and you know that 10 to the power 9 is 1 gigs and so you will have 4 GB space and this is totally unfeasible right and that is why the space complexity is also a big constraint of this problem now since you know that I cannot use a simple array and I have to keep a record of all the ball with their corresponding colors therefore it is best to use a hash map in that scenario right so you can go for a hash map or hash table so in this particular case, I will be taking a ball to color map where the key will be ball and the value will be its color. Now if I solve this query here, where I am given the limit value equals to 4, saying that my balls will be in the range of 0 to 4. 
Now if you look at query number 1, it is saying ball 1 will get color 4 and that is completely fine. And if you have to return the number of total distinct color, then you have to iterate through this entire hash map and check how many unique colors are present. Now why are we iterating through this map and not just returning the size of the map because maybe there will be some other ball with the same color. And so in this case the size will be 2 but you just have a single color right you just have 4 I mean as a color. So you, your answer should have been 1 and, th and that is the reason I will have to iterate and return. So each of the queries uh, input can be done in order of 1 into the hash map but each of the queries answer will be found in order of query size time. Okay, and the query size can go to 10 to the power of 5. Again, for this uh, 2 comma 4, if you create an entry 2 comma 4, then this will get created again. You just have to iterate through this entire uh, hash map and then you will be finding out how many unique colors are there. So this will have one unique color and this will have one unique color. For this 1 comma 3, for ball 1, the color is changing to 3, right? So color for this one has changed to three now you will just iterate through this entire uh, hash map and find out the unique colors. so unique colors are two so the answer will be one comma one comma two for this particular set right now in the problem constraint it was already mentioned that the number of queries will be maximum 10 to the power of five now if you serve each of the query that means each of the uh, queries answer is found in order of q time then you will end up doing it in order of q square time because we are serving q number of queries right so your time complexity will be 10 to the power 10 in runtime which is way beyond your 10 to the power of 8 so definitely this technique will also give you a tle what we need to optimize here is finding the unique colors how many unique colors are there finding this should be optimized and in order to optimize that we need to actually track the distinct colors so the tracking of the distinct colors can be done using a set or a hash map, right? You can use a set or a hash map for this purpose. So we will not go with the set because we also need to track the frequency of all the colors. Because let's say that ball 1 had color 4, ball 2 had color 4 as well and ball 3 had color 4. Now if there is a query which is saying that uh, change the color of this 2 to 5. Now if I am changing this color of 2 to 5 then I should know that 4 is occurring 3 times. 3 times it is occurring right. So if I just overwrite this to color 5 then the frequency should reduce to 2 times and so 4 should not be lost. But if you had used a set here where it says that 4 is a unique color then if the 4 is replaced at 2 with the 5 value then you will not know whether I should remove 4 from the set or I should not remove it okay. So for that reason, in order to track the frequency for each of the color, we cannot go with the set approach. We should always go with the hash map approach in this case, right? So I will be taking a hash map, which is color and frequency. So the color will be the key and frequency will be the value. And I will be taking the other map, which is ball and color, right? So the first and the second hash map with again the KV pair. And now I will be showing you the dry run of this entire idea how it works. Now I have cleaned up the board and let's look at a dry run of our entire idea. So our limit value is again 4. So I have balls in the range of 0 to 4. And these are all my queries. And I will be recording answer for each of my query. So you know that I will be taking two hash maps. One will be the KV pair for each of the ball in order to track the colors. And then uh, for every color we have to count the number of uh, times they have occurred right. So if I go to this 1 comma 4 then ball 1 will have color 4. Now color 4 is not present in the entry set so I will be entering for color 4 the frequency is 1. Now at this particular moment the total number of unique colors will be given by the size of this hash map color frequency hash map okay. Because in the color frequency hash map the number of entries here will be for every distinct color and there is only one distinct color so the size will be 1 hence you will uh, return 1 for this query. Now for the 2 comma 5 query ball 2 has color 5. So color 5 entry is not present so insert a color 5 entry with frequency 1 and again find the size of the color frequency map so that is 2. Now again uh, for 1 comma 3 you see that for this ball 1 the color is changing from 4 to 3 okay. Therefore, we need to reduce the frequency of this color 4. So go to the color frequency map, look at the entry of 4, reduce the frequency. 
if the frequency reaches to zero that means this entry has to be removed entirely from the map and you can erase this entry too okay so we are overwriting this and after doing this we have to insert this color 3 with the frequency 1 now what is the size of this color frequency map it is 2 so the result here will be 2 now if you look at the 3 comma 4 then the ball 3 has color 4 now color 4 entry is not present so we will insert color 4 entry and we will say frequency 1 now the size of the color frequency map is 3 so we are seeing 3 distinct colors now if you go to 4 comma 5 the ball 4 has color 5 okay now if you go to the color frequency map the color 5 is already present so we can just increase the frequency of how many times it occurs and so the size of the color frequency map will again be 3 so we have seen 3 distinct colors 2 comma 1 if you go to this ball 2 you have the color 5 so first you go to uh, this color frequency map look at the color 5 and reduce its frequency by 1 because you will be overwriting this color for ball number 2 and it will be changed to 1 right so once you reduce it your value is still greater than 0 so no need to remove it and now you will overwrite the value here in the ball color map and this value will become 1 create an entry for 1 with a frequency 1 and how many colors are we seeing we are seeing exactly 4 colors 1 4 3 5 so return 4 for this so all the queries will be combined in the form of an array 1 comma 2 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 uh, i mean 3 comma 4 and so you can return this entire array as a result right so this is the entire approach and idea for using the two hash map technique for solving this problem now if you consider about uh, the time complexity then we are going through all of these queries exactly one time and let's say there are n number of queries right now each of the insertion into the ball color map will take order of one time and each of the insertion in the color frequency map also takes order of one time now there is no removal once you insert a ball there is no removal only updating of the value happens in the first map so there is no erase function here but if you look at the color frequency map there is erase function if the frequency of the color reaches to zero but in an unordered map we will be taking it average time order of one so let's say that we will again be consuming order of one for eraser okay now for updating the value for inserting for erasing i will just consume order of one time in unordered map and therefore the time complexity will be order of n for each of the uh, query it is order of one right so n number of queries will take order of n time now for the space complexity you can have all the entries as unique entries and therefore the space complexity will also be order of n therefore the time complexity and space complexity are both order of n and you know that n value is less than equals to 10 to the power of 5 therefore we can solve this problem well within one second time limit so this is the entire approach let's now look at the code if you are someone who is looking to prepare for top product based company within a limited time of just three months then we have brought for you both the dsa and the system design live interview training program the most important feature of this program is you get a filtered and condensed structured curriculum in-depth discussion of all the topics and my guarantee of your understanding one-on-one -on -one guidance with me and live weekend classes to know more about the training you can whatsapp us on this given number in this code you can see that we are given the limit and the queries so i'll be finding the number of queries and taking the two map the color frequency map and the ball color map right and we will be taking the result array where we will be tracking all the result so we will iterate for each of the queries one by one for each query the first value is the ball second value is the color so just extract it and after that we will be going to the ball color map and we will be checking if the ball entry is already present so if the ball entry is already present then this means that for this particular ball certain color must be already entered right so this colors frequency should reduce by one because i will be overwriting this with maybe some other color maybe you will overwrite with two or maybe with the same color right so we can overwrite it so before overwriting we have to reduce its frequency in the color frequency map right we have to do frequency minus minus there and that is what we are doing go to the color frequency map and that for that uh, ball color we will be reducing the frequency by one and if the frequency somehow reaches to be zero then we have to erase this entire entry in from the color frequency map and that is what we are doing here after updating the color frequency map now we can override the value so this is where we are overriding ball color at ball equals to color so this will update to the value 2 here 
and then uh, the color frequency will be making an entry for this two if the entry is already present you just add one to it otherwise you update the value to one and for this particular query the result will be the size of the color frequency map so this will be repeated for each of the query and finally we will be returning the result array so this is how we are going to solve the problem i hope it is clear if you still have any doubt then feel free to comment below and i'll try to help you as soon as possible like and share our video and subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of this programming video see you guys in the next video thank you